proof of work versus proof of stake in the blockchain ecosystem. That's what we're discussing today. I'll be breaking it down in an easy to understand way, trying to remove all of the technical speak if you're not a programmer or a cryptographer in this space. I'll try and explain it in a very, very simple way so you can understand how this works and then base your own opinion off of which blockchain products you want to use, as well as so you can be a bit more active in some of the community things if you're interested in governance with some of these different projects and they're debating between proof of work and proof of stake, how you can think about it in a basic framework. So proof of work versus proof of stake. Let's talk about it. Proof of work is how the Bitcoin ecosystem is set up. So if you understand how this decentralized system of nodes work, where you have multiple miners competing to complete the block. So a blockchain is made up of multiple blocks that have all the transactions in the 10 minute time frame, for example, with Bitcoin. And each of these blocks, when completed, is appended to the blockchain. That's why it's a chain of blocks. So every single transaction that's ever happened on the blockchain ecosystem for Bitcoin is recorded in this decentralized ledger. And essentially the miners are all competing. So it has game theory built in and it has some incentives built in. With this, you're rewarded with block rewards if you can complete this the fastest. So with Bitcoin, one of the problems here is the amount of energy this takes up. Because to run these complex uh, algorithms to complete each block and receive the block rewards, there's a very high incentive because you're getting paid in Bitcoin, okay? So with this, to complete each block, the amount of energy it takes is insane. It's like, I think the, the stat is around like two households of power is what it takes to complete just one block in the Bitcoin ecosystem. So this is where some people think this is a, a bit archaic. Yes, it's a brand new ecosystem. Yes, this is an incredible uh, type of technology where you have the blockchain, but proof of stake really improves on a lot of these things. And it's almost more the greener way of doing things. You don't have this issue with all this computing power building up in kind of hurting, I guess you could say, the overall environment. You could be saving some of that energy. Some people could debate, yes, you could have more clean energy going into this with solar panels, wind, wind energy, water energy, all these different things, uh, more sustainable to actually help uh, build this ecosystem. But to be honest right now, not a lot of miners are doing this. They're, they're mainly just using uh, just basic electricity. So it, it's kind of one way to think about it. So that is proof of work. Essentially, you can think about it is these guys are working to mine a new block. And it's not obviously a physical block. It's essentially a very complex puzzle. I talk about this in a, I have a video called, uh, is, is it too late to start mining Bitcoin? Maybe I'll have that link down below, but I'm not gonna go try and dig too much in detail, you know, how all these things work with the nonce pool, the mempool, with the Bitcoin mining uh, algorithm, all these different things. But uh, if you wanna learn more about that, go watch that video. Now moving on to proof of stake. This is something that a lot of projects are moving towards because again, it is a bit more, you could think about it as greener. So essentially with proof of stake, people are locking in their coins. So there isn't anyone really running a complex like computing algorithm to do this. Rather with proof of stake, you're locking up your coins. And with this, the only way to take over the ecosystem is to have 50% of the total staked amount. And this is pretty much nearly impossible to do with most of the larger cryptocurrencies. Obviously, if, if you have an insanely small cap cryptocurrency, it's, it's not only an issue with proof of stake, but this is also with proof of work, is if you have more than 51%, you can take over the ecosystem. So with, uh, with mining, you can actually do this a lot. If, if you have, let's say, insanely high computing power and you go into one of these smaller cap projects and they're on like a, a, a blockchain ecosystem, it's not like Ethereum or some of these top guys that have much lower market cap. If you have 51% or more of the computing power, you can take over. But with the actual staked amount, this is nearly impossible to do. It's very, very hard to do typically because even if someone has, has a lot of this currency, typically they break it out into different uh, wallets and stake with this. So a lot of these people who actually care about governance, care about the, the long term of these blockchains who are not kind of, uh, you could say, uh, malicious actors um, who aren't trying to like take over the network. They're, they're really in it for, you know, the community and things like this are not trying to do this. So this is just an, a potential issue to think about with both of these. They both have this issue where if you have 51%, you could potentially take over the ecosystem. With proof of stake though, this is great because it, it's not, again, it's not based on the computing power. Rather, it's based on the amount of this token that you are staking. So this is instead how you're running this ecosystem. And the potential risk here is you could lose this this stake token. So that's why, you know, I always talk about in these videos, if you have, uh, essentially, if you have these, these uh, different platforms that are offering very, very high APY. So you have something that's maybe offering 200 plus APY. High return, very, very high risk. 
And when you compare this with something like a normal bank account that's offering a, a smaller percentage rate than the rate of inflation, like 10 times smaller than the rate of inflation, um, it, it's pretty obvious that you want to go with something. But, but you want to take this into account where if someone's promising an insane APY, there's a very high risk with staking. But if, I mean, the staking rewards are, let's say, 25%. Um, th this is an interesting uh, opportunity to do. Um, for example, Cardano is around 5%. Cardano is a great, way, great coin to stake. And you have these different ecosystems all kind of balancing, okay, what's the best thing to do? And it's this interesting debate. And that's really why I wanted to make this video. So if, if you're you know, in, in any of these groups and they're talking about, okay, is proof of work better or is proof of stake better? You at least have a basic framework going into this so you can kind of you know, read this, like be speaking the same language and kind of read what they're talking about and understanding the proof of work is having this mining ecosystem with massive game theory and it's based on computing power. So working to complete these transactions versus proof of stake is just actually staking this amount of the currency. And with that, you can run the ecosystem. So it's very interesting. Both of these are working to verify transactions, okay? So that's how you work on the blockchain. Since it's a decentralized infrastructure, you need some sort of mechanism to do this. And these are two of the options. Uh, th there is kind of talk about some other ones, but uh, we can save that for another video. It's interesting because people are constantly innovating while at the same time you have these uh, malicious actors that are constantly looking for weak points in the system. We saw this with the paid network hack. And uh, it just all depends on what is the security of the ecosystem. You know, the blockchain trilemma is decentralization, speed and scalability, and then security. And something like XRP doesn't have that decentralization. That's where they kind of lack. Something like Ethereum with, with the current situation it is that it's, it's still in version two. And with Uniswap with these high fees, it doesn't have that scalability. So, so it's, it's very, very good in decentralization. It's incredibly good with security, with smart contracts, but this is where it's lacking. So each of these blockchains kind of fall short on some of these, but then you have something like Algorand, which is their whole point is kind of to focus on really having a balance between all these three. I have a video on Algorand and a video on uh, the blockchain trilemma. You can search our channel for that or look in the playlist, but that's pretty much it for today's video. Let me know what you think about proof of work versus proof of stake. If you want to see a more in-depth video explaining, you know, I can go into more of the technical details, but I just wanted to keep this as a basic framework to it. So you, again, you can understand and you can participate in some of the conversations around proof of work versus proof of stake. So let me know in the comments, which one you think is better. If you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, and whatnot, invest global. And until next time.